Unfortunately, most people are simply lost. Most people are looking for something and they're not even sure what it is they're looking for. I mean, some of the people that I've met while I've been in the United States are so confident and I've got so much going for them and beautiful looking people, talented people. And yet when you get them alone and you really start talking to them, very often they're feeling very, very insecure about themselves and just lost within themselves. They're looking for this thing, this magical place that they call success or happiness or whatever it is they're looking for. And they seem to think it is this tangible place that they're going to get to. Many of them don't realize that the place that they're looking for is the journey itself and they're missing out on the journey because they're so focused on what the outcome of the journey will be. As said by John Lennon, life is what happens while you're planning other things. And it's really important to take that into account that the important part about it is the journey. It's the moments that you're experiencing every day. This is the place that you're looking for. And very often we're missing out on that place because we think that place exists at the end of the path. We don't realize that the path we're on is the place. There is no other place. There is no place you're going to get to. There is no place of enlightenment. It's the journey itself. And it's what you do with the information that comes to you along the way. But most people have this focal point of what life should be once they've made it, in inverted commas. But what is making it? You know, making it really is discovering yourself. And that is what life is about. And that is the most important part of life. And that is the most important part of the journey. That is the journey. Life is a journey of self-discovery. There's nothing else to it, ladies and gentlemen. It doesn't matter about all the stuff that you collect along the way. It doesn't matter what image you think you've built for yourself. It doesn't matter whether you've built yourself up to be a pop star or this or that. What about you? What have you discovered about you? And what have you gotten from the journey? What do you have to offer other people to help them discover themselves? I mean, there's so much more to this than what we're given to believe ladies and gentlemen we're given all these superficial things that we're told we need to measure ourselves up to when really the entire journey of life is a journey of self-discovery and that's what we're missing out on very often because as i said we've got this focal point we've got this thing that we think we need to attain this certain persona we think we need to become rather than simply becoming ourselves along the way and taking the information in from the path that we're on and applying it to ourselves. And when you do that, it makes all the difference to your life. Now, unfortunately, most people go through their lives acting as their own worst enemy because they beat themselves up so much about what they think they should be, when really what they should be and what they've always been is what they are, and that's all they ever need to be. It's just discovering the best way to be the best of that. That's the trick. So you think about it, you know, you've got a situation where humanity is born and their default state is happiness and you take that happiness away from them. And then you put them in a situation where the only way they are able to reobtain any thought of what that happiness may be is to search for it externally and to extract resources from the earth and climb the social economic ladder to get what they perceive happiness will be to obtain this position of happiness. And really, it's the perfect way to run a people farm. You just lock people into this mentality, enslave them to an economic system whereby they are forced to strip mine the earth in order to climb to the top of the people pile, the social pile, the economic pile, under the mistaken belief that that is where they will find happiness. But just look at some of the richest people around the place. Look at some of the richest people in America, some of the richest people in Beverly Hills, for example. I don't know if you've ever driven around Beverly Hills, but the place looks like a fortress. It looks like a series of fortresses all gathered together on a hilltop. Now, all of these huge walls around all of these houses with all of these miserable people inside, all these very rich, very miserable people who simply don't know who their friends are because they're so rich that everybody wants to be their friend. So who is really their friend? Who wants to know them simply for them? 
who wants to know them on a personal level simply for being who they are? You know, it's a very, very uncomfortable situation these people seem to have got themselves in. When you drive through Beverly Hills, you can almost feel the pain of some of the people through the walls of the fortresses that they live in. It just seems very sad to me. I'm sure they're filthy rich, mega rich. They can do whatever they want. They've got their own private airlines. They can go anywhere, do anything. But it gets to that point, folks, when you can go anywhere and do anything and the entire world is your oyster, then suddenly you've been everywhere and you've done everything and you've seen everything there is to see and bought everything there is to buy. And where was the happiness in all that? Where was that thing, that little spark, that golden moment where your eyes glittered and your smile lit up for no reason and your heart jumped? Where was that moment? Was that anywhere in all of that stuff and all those places you went and all those things that you did and all this money that you collected? I mean, where was it? You know, many of these people get to that point where they spend their life doing this and they obtain this incredible status or goal or whatever it is they think they've obtained or had to obtain. And they get to a point where their life suddenly leapfrogs over themselves and lands in their face and they realize that it was all for nothing that it's just this empty, hollow reality, and that really it was about life. But when you think about it, it's the perfect way to run a people farm. You know, you've got people out there strip mining the earth in search of happiness. This is really what's going on. You know, We're strip mining the earth and turning it into trinkets and selling the trinkets to people, and people are buying the trinkets and putting them on thinking, now I'm happy. Whether the trinket is a necklace or a castle or a house or a block of land or a relationship, whatever it is, it's not themselves. It's something that they're clinging on to, to try to fill that gap that exists within themselves because they've never really looked there and they've never really stepped back and looked at life and thought about what it really is.